Hey everyone, it's Tyler Stroik from Universal Rackets and this is going to be an amazing video because in this video we're going to be teaching you the proper footwork to execute your forehand, backhands, returns, and drives. Once again, if you stay tuned for this whole video, we're going to be teaching you tips and tricks to get proper footwork next time you're on court. Footwork is so overlooked in pickleball. Players, they think they need to hit a big ball, they need to hit a big return, it's because of their swing, it's because of their paddle. No, it is because of your feet. If you ever feel like you get too close, too far, if you don't feel consistent with your shot, nine times out of 10, it's your footwork. And many players, they don't talk about the footwork. So in this video, you're probably going to learn something that you've never thought of before, and it will completely transform your pickleball game. So first we're going to start beginner. We're going to do forehand and backhand at the same time. And then we are going to get more advanced into more advanced footwork tactics. So make sure you stay tuned for this whole video. So the first thing that you want to do for the forehand and the backhand is you want to step with your opposite foot. And what I mean by that, if I'm a right-handed player for my forehand, I want to step with my left foot. If I'm a left-handed player for my forehand, I want to step with my right foot. All you want to do in pickleball for your forehand is step with the opposite foot that you're hitting with, okay? So again, I'm going to step, because I'm a righty, I'm going to step with my left foot, lefty, step with my right foot. I want you to think for this whole video that you're in Dance Dance Revolution, those old arcade dance games where you have the arrows, okay? All you're going to do and what I want you to think to do is step across your body on that opposite arrow. Notice when I step, I don't step to the side, I don't step straight ahead, I step a little bit across the body, just like again that arrow that'll help visualizing that. Now why do you want to step? You want to step so you can get into the ball. You want to step because you want to get power. Too many players, they think in order to hit a powerful shot, they need to swing as hard as possible. And that's not true. If you want to hit a bigger shot, and by the end of this video, you're going to learn how to get your legs in the ball, how to step bigger, take a bigger step, drive into that step, and get that effortless power, okay? So all I want to do, again, is all I want to do is I want to step with my body, and then I want to swing. Again, all I'm going to do is step with my body, and then I'm going to swing forward. A great drill to do, and this is such a DIY drill, you can do it with just yourself. All you need is a pickleball, a paddle, and somewhere to hit, is all you're going to do is you're going to toss the ball out in front, and you're going to step across your body and hit. Again, I'm going to toss the ball out in front, step, and hit. Same thing for lefty. I'm going to toss the ball out in front, step and hit. One more, toss the ball in front, step and hit. The main thing that I want you to think and I want you to start to realize and get that feeling is stepping and then hitting. As soon as you step with your opposite foot, then you swing. Once again, it's not step, hit. It's not hit, okay? We're stepping now, right? It's step and hit step and hit. As soon as you plant your foot down, you swing your paddle. Lefty, as soon as I plant my foot down, I swing my paddle. I want you th to think of the step like pulling a trigger. Once again, as soon as you step, it's like you pull the trigger and you fire a gun. The moment that you step, nothing stops, right? It's already firing, it's going. So as soon as you plant that foot down, that non-dominant foot for your forehand, you're going to fire your swing. So step and swing, step and swing. As soon as you plant your feet, you're going to go for it. And here's a big thing. A lot of players, they try to just get the ball in. They try to just get it in and they end up hitting out. They can't hit power and they end up self-destructing because they're just trying to get it in. Now, what are we doing after this first component of this video? As soon as we step down with our foot, we pull the trigger and we let it go. So you need to get the mentality again. As soon as you get your foot down, you let it go. As soon as I get the foot down, I let it go. Now that's the forehand. Now we are going to be talking about the backhand. So for the backhand, instead of stepping with my left foot for my forehand, now I'm going to step with my right foot across the body for my backhand. Now I want you to know, you wanna step with your outside leg for the backhand, one or two backhand. It doesn't matter how many hands you have on the paddle. You could have one, two, or three. You wanna step across your body with that outside leg. So again, if you're a right-hand player, you're stepping with your left for your forehand, now you're stepping with your right for your backhand. If you're a left-handed player, you're stepping with your right for your forehand, now you're stepping with your left for your backhand. It is the exact same thing, except 
you're stepping on the opposite arrow. So you're going to do the exact same thing and you're going to toss the ball up in the air and you're going to work on just stepping, pulling the trigger, and then again, letting everything go. Now, for this drill to get synchronized for the backhand, if you have a two-handed backhand, it's kind of more difficult to just toss it and get both hands on the paddle. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to toss the ball a little bit higher. You're going to let the ball bounce twice, one, two, then you're going to step and hit. Again, for the lefty, you're going to toss it up higher, one, two, then step and then hit. By allowing the ball to bounce twice, it's going to have you get more time so you can really set up and step into your shot. So I want you to think again at a beginner level, just getting into footwork. You are stepping with your opposite foot. Every single time that you hit a forehand now, instead of just swinging, you're going to step and then swing. Step on that opposite arrow, right? You're doing a dance, dance, dance revolution for the backhand. Now, instead of stepping across the body with that foot, I'm going to step with my other foot. Guys, this is going to completely transform your game. Once again, if you don't already step or if you don't think about stepping, if you can step, it's going to transform your game. You're going to be able to now get into the ball. Your, your momentum is going to be able to go forward. Now, we are going to be getting a little bit more advanced. So once you understand the step, now we have to understand when to step. Tyler, the ball's coming to me. You're telling me to step. When in, in the world am I supposed to step? It's very simple. As soon as the ball bounces, then you want to step. Once again, if you want to time your step properly, you need to step as soon as the ball bounces to you. As soon as the ball bounces, then you're going to step, pull the trigger, and swing. Again, the ball's gonna bounce, step, hit. The ball's gonna bounce, step, hit. The ball's gonna bounce, step, hit. It could be my third shot drive, right? So I serve it, they return it. Now the ball's gonna bounce, step, hit. Or it could be my return. They serve it, the ball's gonna bounce, step, hit. Hit, okay as soon as the ball bounces again you're going to step and hit now it is easier said than done I'm just talking about it. in this video I'm going to be just tossing the ball to myself but when your opponent hits it when there's wind when there's spin when there's nerves when there's so many other things that you have to worry about in pickleball it's going to be difficult to time your step so what you're going to do in order to time your step properly you are going to say it out loud once again, if you can say it out loud and say the steps out loud, it's going to teach your muscle memory and it's going to synchronize it and make it way easier for you. So all you're going to do is you're going to do your hand feed drill, just like I taught you, or you can have your opponent feed balls to you, hit balls to you, and all you're going to do is say bounce, step, hit. Bounce, step, hit. Remember, hit is like a fire, right? We're pulling the trigger. So again, we're gonna to toss the ball up. We're gonna let it bounce twice. So we're gonna call bounce on the second one for the backhand. So here we are. The ball's gonna bounce. We're gonna call on the second bounce. Bounce, step, hit. Bounce, step, hit. So for the forehand, here we are. Bounce, step, hit. Bounce, step, hit. Bounce is one, step is two, hit is three. So it's not one, two, three. It's one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Because once again, at two, you fire. If you can do that over and over again and start to get synchronized into the ball and synchronized into your step, it is going to completely transform your game. Now, I personally love to use this when I'm learning or teaching students how to step to the ball, but also at a higher level, I love to use this to help myself with my returns. When you're playing big servers, when you feel like the ball is coming super fast at you, if you can call the bounce and then step at the same time or right after, it's going to completely make it way easier to deal with that server. So if I'm ever playing a big serve, I'm literally going to say bounce, step, hit. Again, I'm gonna say bounce, step, hit. So even at a higher level, by saying it out loud, by saying it out loud not only to annoy your opponent, but by synchronizing the actual timing to yourself, it will completely change your game. Now, once we understand that we have to step across our body, now once we understand the synchronization, now we're getting into it about stepping and hitting, now we have to add another step. Because when we're playing pickleball, 
the ball's not going to be served to us on a silver platter. Now, I wish it was, but it's not, right? So what do we have to do before we step to the ball? We have to make sure that we move. We have to get to the ball, then we have to pull the trigger and hit. You don't wanna pull the trigger and step at the wrong time because if you step at the wrong time, if you're not there at the ball, right? You, the ball bounces over here. I'm still here. The ball bounces and I step and I hit. The ball's over here, right? I can't do it. So you need to make sure that you aim and then go with your step. So what I want you to think now, we're going to add something. We're going to add two steps. So step number one is you want to turn. Now, after you turn, you're going to move to the ball. Now you are going to bounce, step, hit. Again, instead of waiting for the ball or not knowing when to go, you're going to turn, take your paddle back, you're going to move to the ball. Then the ball is going to bounce, step, hit. So the next drill that you're going to do to teach yourself is you could have your partner toss the ball to you, hit the ball to you, or you could toss the ball out wide to yourself, and you're going to turn, move to the ball, bounce, step, hit. Again, I'm going to turn, move to the ball, doing it for two, bounce, step, hit. So start realizing how to turn and then move to the ball. And then again, as soon as it bounces, then you're going to step and you hit. So after you understand the actual step, the necessity of the step, now you synchronize your step. Now you have to move over to get into the proper position to step. So you're going to toss the ball out to the side. You're going to do the same exact thing for your forehand. So again, you're going to turn, you're going to move to the ball, bounce, step, hit. Again, I'm going to turn, I'm gonna to move to the ball, bounce, step, hit. So start realizing where to go when you're moving to the ball. Now, there are four main ways that we can move. We can move to the right, we can move to the left, we can move forward, and we can move backward. So also what you can do is turn, move to the ball, bounce, step, hit forwards, like you would for your return, or if they push you super deep, you could work on turn, move back to the ball, bounce, step, hit. I have to go higher because that was pushed back. Bounce, step, hit. So learn how to move to the ball, get in the proper position, then step and hit. It's going to completely transform your game. So now we need to work on how to get into the proper position to step. So again, first we taught ourselves a step, then we worked on the timing of the step, then we moved to the ball for the step. Now we are going to perfect this amazing step and you're going to have an amazing pickleball shot. Are you ready? Let's go. So I want you to think, when you move to the ball, okay, I'm moving this way and then I'm pulling the trigger and then I'm going forward. So instead of just moving to the ball and then stepping and hitting, that's more intermediate, you're picking it up. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to move to the ball, I'm moving this way, right? Now the moment that I feel like I moved this way enough, I'm going to plant with my back leg. Now, after I plant with my back leg, then I'm going to go forward and hit. I'm going to repeat that one more time. So the ball's over here, okay? I'm moving this way. The moment that I feel like I moved enough this way, I'm going to plant with my outside leg. That's going to stop me from moving this way. Then I'm going to step and hit forward. So what you are going to do is you are going to move till you get to the ball with your outside leg, and then you're going to step forward with it, and then you're going to hit. This is a concept called heel to toe, let it go. Ball's over here, right? So all you're going to do is you're going to go over, heel, you're gonna stop on your heel, then you're going to step forward on your toe, and then you're going to let it go. Again, the ball's over here. What's going to happen? I'm going to turn. I'm going to go to the ball. Now I'm thinking of leading with my outside leg, heel to toe, to let it go. Same thing for the backhand. The ball's over here. Here we are. I'm going to take my paddle back. I'm going to move to the ball. Now once I'm done moving this way, what am I going to do? I'm going to slam the brakes. I'm going to put my outside leg to it, and then I am going to swing and hit. Now this is a lot of stuff to do, and this is why we did this further into the video. You have to perfect, you have to spend a lot of time, a lot of practice, a lot of energy on the first concepts that we went over. However, now what are you going to do? You're going to hopefully have someone feed the ball to you, or you can toss the ball. You're gonna to move to the ball, you're gonna to go to your heel. Then you're gonna stop, you're gonna catch the ball where your heel is, right? And then what are you going to do? Then after your heel, you're gonna step forward, and then you are going to hit. 
Preferably what's going to happen is if I had someone feeding the ball to me, they would, I would turn, I would go to them, I would stop here, right? And then they would drop the ball and then I would step forward and swing. So again, you go out to the ball. Once I'm done moving this way, I'm slamming the brakes with my outside leg and then I'm stepping forward and then I'm going to hit. So once I'm done moving to the side, you're slamming the brakes with the outside leg. I like to think it's like a grab claw. I keep on mentioning all these arcade references, but seriously is you're moving, you're moving, you're moving. And then once you feel like you're in the proper position, then you're going to press the button and try to win your prize. You're moving, you're moving, you're moving. Once you're in the proper position, you're going to plant your outside leg. That means that you're pressing the button and then you're going to step forward and then you hit. If you go too soon, if you go too close, what's gonna happen? You're gonna press the button, and if the ball's over here, you're gonna miss. Or if the ball's close, you're gonna miss. You're not gonna get the prize. So you have to start working on lining up your back foot with the ball. My back heel should be in line with the ball. What I mean by that is if the ball is right here, it's coming to me at that path, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to line up right here a little bit at or behind it a tiny bit. I'm not going in front of it, note, note that, because then I have to step on the outside. I wanna be either at or a little bit behind it so then I can go out to it and then I can hit. We have a ball right here. I wanna make sure that I'm going out to the ball. The ball's coming in. My heel is basically six inches behind it so then I can step forward and look. Now I can make contact out in front. So you wanna think again, you line your back heel up with the ball and then you swing and then you hit. Now again, this is much easier said than done. You have to go over and over and over again, but start realizing again, that as soon as you plant your outside heel, then you're going to step forward and then you're going to hit. A great thing for the forehand is not only do you have to utilize your outside heel, you can utilize your non-dominant hand for proper spacing for your forehand. And what I mean by that is wherever you can get your non-dominant hand out to, that's exactly where you want to make contact with the ball. Once again, wherever I can get my non-dominant hand out to, look, there's my heel, right? That's exactly where I want to make contact with my ball. So by utilizing your non-dominant hand, it's also going to help you with your heel. Now for your backhand, if you have two hands or if you have one and you're flying in the dark, you can't use your non-dominant hand like you did for your forehand. So you really have to only use the heel and then you're going to swing and hit. This is going to take time. Now, once we understand the heel to toe, now we can get into the power. Heel to toe, let it go, don't you know. You will never hit slow again unless you want to, okay? So what I mean by that is now, by learning the heel to toe, not only are we able to get into the shot, but we're also able to execute a weight transfer. Once again, if you can think heel to toe, not only are you going to be able to hit into your shot, but you're also going to be able to transfer your weight. So now watch, all of my power, when I go heel to toe, look, all of my power is in my back leg, right? I have all my weight. All of my weight is in that back heel. If I took my foot off, I would keep all of my weight. I would be balanced in that back heel. Now, as soon as all that weight's in my back heel, now I'm going to explode it forward onto my front toe, and then I'm going to hit. And this is how we hit an amazing big ball. Players, they try to swing or they don't get into their legs, they can't hit a big shot. If I wanna hit a huge, if I wanna rip this shot, I'm going to load all my weight in my back heel, then I'm going to explode on my front toe. So I want you to think again, heel to toe, let it go. I'm turning, all of my weight is going in my back heel. All the power, it comes from the ground up. I'm harnessing it in that leg, and then I'm going to step forward with my toe, and then I'm going to let it go. I'm literally going from my back leg to my front leg. My hands are loose. I'm turned. All the power, all the oomph in my shot is coming from the legs now because now we know how to hit this amazing footwork pattern by going from step one to step two, to step three, step four, and now we're at step five. Guys, this is why when you go out and you watch on the PPA tour or Major League Pickleball, wherever you're watching, if you see the pros in person, they hit such an amazing, crisp, effective ball, but it looks like they're doing half the amount of work. And the reason why is because they have the proper footwork. They're allowed to get their feet into the proper position. 
position. If you can do this, you're going to be able to drill your shots with effortless amount of power. It's not going to feel like you're doing too much. It's because you're using your legs and not your arms. I want you to think, I'm not a big lifter, okay? I play pickleball, I play tennis. However, when you're deadlifting, if you try deadlift and you just lean over like this, you're not going to be able to pick up a lot. But if you get into your legs and you get down and you get in a proper position and then you go up, you're going to be able to lift so much more because you're utilizing the right parts of your body. It's the same thing with power in pickleball. So again, go out to the ball, load on your back heel. All your weight's gonna be on your back heel and then you're going to explode forward, heel the toe, let it go, and then you're going to be able to really hit that shot and blister that ball through the court and beat your opponents. So we showed the backhand, but it's the exact same thing for the forehand as well. I'm gonna to go to the ball. I'm gonna load all my power. It's gonna be on the heel. Heel, here we are. And then I'm gonna take a big step forward to toe, boom, and then I am going to let it go. Look how big of a shot I hit right there. I wasn't doing much. All I was doing was loading in my back leg, all the weights in my back heel, right? Then I'm exploding forward on my front toe, and then I'm hitting. Now this is a big disclaimer. And this, if players already know how to step, they're not stepping properly or they're not stepping with the right intention. Heel to toe, let it go. When you go to the ball and you pull the trigger, right now, you're not gonna just go boom, right? You're gonna go boom, boom, right? You're gonna pull the trigger, right? When you go to the ball, you're not just gonna take a little step and hit. You're not just gonna tiny step, and swing. No, you are going to plant your foot down, okay? There are, back in like 2020 during COVID, there was those lightning bugs or lantern flies all over Philadelphia, right? In Philadelphia, they were infested. There are these big giant bugs and they told you to kill them because they were like an invasive species. And they were big, you'd step on them and they'd crunch, all their guts would come out. Ew, disgusting, right? But pretend, I want you to pretend that you have a big, juicy, giant bug right there. If you have a big, juicy, giant bug, in your house, are you gonna just go up to it and go like this? No, you're not gonna go like that. You're gonna move up to it and then you're gonna go boom, wop. You're gonna hit it, right? Or maybe you're gonna use your partner shoe like the pickle yogis like I do so you don't get your shoes with all the bug guts. However, you're going to step like you see the biggest giant bug and you need to kill it because it's in your house. I'm not taking a baby step. I'm loading on my heel and then Boom, I'm stepping forward and then I'm hitting. Notice the distance in my legs, right? I'm going out to the ball, kind of like I'm lunging in a way. I'm not taking a baby step. I'm driving into that ball. And what I mean by that is a lot of players, if they step, they understand, they go to the ball, then they take a little step and then they hit. No, I'm gonna move to the ball, I'm gonna drive this foot and then I'm going to hit. Again, I'm going to move to the ball, that wasn't that synchronized. Then I'm gonna drive that foot, here we are, boom, and then I'm going to hit. The moment I drive my leg into it again, that's when I'm pulling the trigger. A great tip for this is that you wanna show the bottom of your shoe sole. And what I mean by that is if you step properly and someone takes a video of you from up front like I am, watch. When I do this, you can see the bottom of my shoe sole. Again, I'm gonna go out to the ball. Here we are, I go out, here we are, heel to toe, boom. You can see, I'm taking a big giant step. So take a big step, show the bottom of your shoe sole, pretend there's a super juicy, crunchy bug, and you will be able to drive your foot into the ball and hit such a better shot. Now, once we get done that, now we're going to finish with one more thing, and that is recovering. So not only can you use your footwork for your forehand and your backhand for hitting an effective, powerful shot, but you can also use your footwork or forehand and backhand footwork to recover. So watch, I'm gonna go out to the ball. I'm gonna go heel to toe, boom, driving into the ball, now I'm gonna swing. And now watch what I'm going to do. Are you ready? This is going to change your game if you play singles. If you play doubles, it can help you as well. Look, you see that? And now watch what I'm gonna do. See that? Let's try again. Here we are. Heel to toe, here we are, boom. Now watch what I'm gonna do. See that? Or here, boom, now I'm going to be able to push off and go forward. So after you do your heel to toe, then you can bring your opposite leg around to recover or push you off into the court. If I hit my forehand, heel to toe, I swing, then I'm going to bring my foot around and I'm either going to what? Recover back if I'm in singles or I'm going to, here we are, I'm gonna swing, boom, and then I'm going to be able to push off and run forward. Same thing for my backhand, okay? I'm gonna go out to the ball, here we are. Heel to toe, boom. 
I'm gonna bring my foot around and then again, either push back or here we are, hit, and then I'm going to be able to run up forward. So by using your outside leg and rotating around your shot, that's going to allow you to recover and move up the kitchen further. The players, they start to learn this bringing the foot around and then they start to overcompensate with it. And what I mean by that is then players, they're swinging like this. Or players, again, they're swinging like this. They're rotating with their foot. Notice, I want to what? I want to turn, take my paddle back. I want to load on my outside leg. I want to step forward. I'm going to swing and then I'm going to bring my outside foot around. I'm not bringing my outside foot around when I hit. I am again turning, moving to the ball, outside leg, stepping forward, finishing, and then I'm bringing my foot around. I do not bring my foot around until I finish my shot. So again, I'm gonna step, finish, then outside foot around. I'm not just bringing the outside foot around. Again, here we are, let's do one going out wide coming back and then one moving up to the kitchen. So I'm gonna go out to the ball, step. Here we are, finish, outside foot around, and then I'm gonna be able to come back. I'm gonna move up now, step. Here we are, outside foot around, and look, now I'm able to come up to the kitchen and hit a better ball. So by utilizing your outside leg in the proper way, again, don't make sure you compensate with it, that's why we taught this at the end, it will completely transform your game. Whew, have to put my pickleball paddle down, guys. Guys, if you can watch this whole video, if you can go step by step, if you can get a partner to work on these different tips, different tactics, this progression of footwork, this actual progression that will completely transform your pickleball game, you're gonna hit such a bigger shot. You're gonna be so much more effective. You're gonna be able to get more balls. You're gonna have more confidence, more power, more control, and you're gonna win more points and you're gonna be a better pickleball player. If you don't already step, we're stepping. If you're already stepping, you're thinking about stepping, you're stepping the proper way. If you're already stepping the proper way, now we're working on getting to the ball and loading on our outside leg. Now, once we get stopping with our outside leg, now we're loading on our outside leg and exploding on our outside leg, and then we're using our outside leg to bring it around to rotate back into the court and win more points. If you guys like this video, make sure to comment, make sure to subscribe, make sure to share. If you guys want any type of program in your area, make sure to click the link in the description, Universal Rackets Representative, we'll get out to you. If you guys love me, follow me on Instagram, follow my wife on Instagram, subscribe, share, whatever, hit the better balls, play better footwork. I'm super tired. That was a long video. Have a good one, happy hitting, and we will see you guys next time on court.